Today we are talking about confidence. Uh, how to build confidence that lasts regardless of the situation, right? How to, uh, how to walk into any situation believing in ourselves. Uh, that is a skill uh, I want us to have and that every great athlete should have. And I'll tell you kind of the ways to build that. All right, so recap of the summer. Uh, I'm not sure I did goal setting with the varsity. I did it with the mods. There's a, a YouTube video on some goal setting, how to set some smart goals. Uh, if you want to go watch that. We've done motivation. We've done being a great teammate. We've done controlling anxiety, focus, nail confidence. All right, all these things are building on each other. Uh, all different skills we want to have leading into uh, competition. Right. And then you've seen this before. Confidence, composure, focus. Those are our three main areas that we're uh, that uh, contribute to mental toughness. All right, uh, and we're locking in on the confidence part today. Confidence is trust, right? What is uh, trust? Trust, confidence, and efficacy are all synonyms for each other, right? This slide I copied straight from the being a great teammate one, right? Uh, trust is the belief that your team can accomplish a task, right? Uh, or your teammate will accomplish a task, right? Uh, I ask. Uh, one of the coxswains to execute a workout. I want you to do 2,000 meters at rate 24, right? If I believe they can uh, do it, I have confidence in them. If I don't think they're gonna get it done, I, I don't have confidence in their ability to accomplish a task. Uh, confidence is your belief in yourself. So if trust is between teammates, confidence is with, uh, with yourself, and it's relative to the task, you know. Uh, do you believe you can break 10 minutes on a 2K? We should all be able to do that, right? But can we PR in a 2K tomorrow? Uh, the task changes, right? So how can we walk into any task feeling confident, right? We built, we've, we've heard me say that a couple of times. The benefits of confidence, right? Uh, when we're confident, we're gonna perform better, right? We can focus on the relevant things, on the, on the important things, right? We can manage our anxiety, right? So that we are under anxious and bored or over anxious and nervous, right? Uh, and we manage our thoughts, feelings, actions cycle, right? If we're thinking good, we're feeling good and we're acting good, right? If we're thinking, uh, thinking great, feeling great, acting great, all right? And that's kind of how confidence plays a role in that. There are six sources of confidence, right? There are six ways we can improve our confidence. And these are them our previous accomplishments, right? Previously having accomplished task, right? That is the uh, best way to improve your confidence. Uh, if you, if, once you break seven minutes on your 2K, you always break seven minutes on your 2K. Why? Because it's a previous accomplishment, right? But you gotta kind of break through that wall. I've seen uh, athletes get stuck. 702, 701, 703, seven minutes, zero second, point six. Right, they get stuck and they go 659 and then a 651 boom and then a 648 boom they just uh, they break through that wall right previous accomplishments your verbal persuasion what you uh, say to yourself has a huge role right and if you're speaking negatively about yourself then then you're draining a source of confidence uh, comparable experiences right uh, looking back at old uh, SRA crews, seeing how they've done it and then following their blueprint, or right, source of confidence. They did it a certain way, they got a result. We'll do it a certain way to get a result. Uh, your physiological state, how your, your nervousness, your anxiousness, how you're managing along with your emotional state, or how are you managing your nerves, how are you managing your day-to-day -day, uh, anxiety, uh, both positive and negative sources of stress, right? Uh, how you manage those are a source of confidence. And then your imagery, what do you see around yourself? Uh, what you see yourself doing in your head, uh, imagery, I always think of like a, uh, a daydream that you get lost in, right? And then you come out of it like nervous or, or anxious or whatever. You know, if you imagine yourself winning, you know, your body or, or accomplishing a task, your body will follow suit. Right? So that's important. Those six sources we want to come back to. This one's really important. So uh, make sure you lock into this. How you explain your accomplishments. Right, a lot of times uh, we'll get a result or we'll accomplish a task 
And we, we had to explain how that happened in a certain way, right? Was the outcome of the event internally controlled or externally influenced, right? Did we accommodate, did we uh, say you win a race? Did you win the race because you executed your race plan or did you win the race because everyone else failed their race plan? If it's internally controlled, right? Uh, it's a more solid way of explaining your accomplishment, right? Uh, was the cause of the, uh, of the outcome stable or unstable? Is it going to happen again, right? Uh, if you're wrong at 2K and uh, your opponent catches an over-the-head crab, right, and then you win, right, that's unstable, right, because what are the odds of them catching that crab again, right? We don't want to build our, our confidence off of that, right? Uh, we do want to build off something that can happen again and again, right? And did you have control of the outcome? Was it in your control? Uh, a lot of a lot of times after practice, I ask you, thoughts could bend different in practice. Uh, the weather was good. Not in our control, right? If we had a good practice, we're not going to uh, connect it to something that's out of our control. We want to connect it to stuff that is in our control, right? Uh, if we ex explain our own accomplishments using these three things, we'll build our, uh, our confidence faster. Are you going to hear me uh, cite these things over and over in practice? And then following that are these confidence traps, right? These are a way to undermine your own confidence, right? Confidence is a skill, right? You would never actively do something to keep yourself from catching well on the water or making a release turn, making a finish turn, right? That would, that, when you say that out loud, sounds crazy, right? Hey, would you, I need want you to go make a finish turn. No, I'm good. I'm, I'm going to not work on that today, right? That sounds nuts. But how many of these confidence traps that you see do happen on a uh, on a day-to-day -day basis, right? Uh, the ones that stand out, uh, do you feel you're attacked when you're giving feedback, right? Uh, coaches is personally attacking me. Uh, when you work really hard, you win a piece, right? One time forever. Uh, they'll, you know, I, I won that one time, it's never gonna happen again, right? Uh, these traps, right, keep you from building your confidence, right? Take a look at these traps, review these traps, and catch yourself when you find yourself uh, explaining the outcome with one of these traps, right? And when you catch yourself doing that, that's okay, right? We're just going to go from negative and irrelevant to positive and relevant. How do we change it, right? Uh, if you Let's see, let's pick a good one. Blame trap. You make excuses following a negative outcome. That one is, is a big one, right? I lost the piece. Why'd you lose the piece? So-and-so uh, cut me off, right? Let's not make excuses. What, what could we have done? Could we could have steered around? Could we have steered a different course? Could we have made uh, corrections? Uh, what was in our control that we could have done, right? You, you had a negative outcome. It was windy. Not in our control. What's in our control? Right, the blame trap's a big one, but all of them are relevant, right? What's in there, how do we take these traps, right, that are uh, negative and relevant, identify them, and then switch to something that's positive? And these are your action steps, right? So today's presentation is a short one, but just because it's short doesn't mean it's not uh, important, right? The first one is set your goals, keep track of your goals, and then track the reason behind your failures and successes, right? If you need to go back and watch the goal setting one, right? Well, we've asked you to keep a journal, right? Keep a training journal, right? Uh, and when you have a good piece or you have a good day, find out why it was a good day. You know, if you've been working on your, your five mile run and all of a sudden you PR, you know, why'd you PR? Because all the work you put in, right? Start seeing why things are happening because that's the parts that you'll carry forward with you. Uh, make your goals task oriented. You know, we we all have goals and aspirations of winning, you know, uh, winning races and winning. Uh, I know personally, winning nationals. I want to win nationals. I think that'd be awesome. All right. Uh, so what I did was I went through and found uh, the past ten years of both scholastic nationals and youth nationals, and averaged the time for every event. Right. So, so I think like the men's the men's eight at scholastic nationals, the average winning time is four minutes and 50 seconds, 
right? So the goal is not to win Scholastic Nationals, right? The goal is to go four minutes, 50 seconds. And if we go for, if we can, if our men's day can go 450 on a, on a 1500, then I know we give ourselves a shot, all right? Uh, watch your language, right? I talk about this all the time. How many, how many times do guys get down on themselves, but they would never talk to a teammate that way? They're like, oh, that piece, you know, would you ever tell a teammate, your piece sucked, you wrote like garbage. Oh, this is awful. You would never tell a teammate. But I hear guys saying that about themselves all the time, right? Let's do our homework, number four, right? Uh, I, I call other coaches and I talk to them and how did you become successful? And I want to follow their blueprint. Uh, our fifth one, controlling your breathing, right? When you get distracted, come back to your breathing and find out what's important now, right? Just win, right? By eliminating distractions, you'll allow yourself to do that much easier. Kind of like finding where's Waldo. If you can eliminate those distractions, you can find Waldo way easier, right? And see yourself accomplish your goal. Right, when you do your visualization, think about what's gonna be like. I think about it all the time. What's gonna be like when, we, when we're successful? Right, what's it gonna look like? What's it gonna feel like? And that's it. Are there any questions uh, before I stop recording? Questions before I stop recording? All right, I'm gonna go ahead and stop recording. Mm -hmm. yeah, not bad.